there, so this is episode 10 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, The Beacon. Bit of an odd title considering said beacon doesn't appear until the end of the episode, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So we pick up where we left off when Adora and the Princess Alliance of Perfuma, Mermista, and Seahawk are able to rescue Glimmer, Bow, and the She-Ra sword from the Horde. Um, however, uh, Entrapta was supposedly killed, and the rest of the princesses are really bummed out about that, saying that this Princess Alliance was a mistake, they dissolve it, they all head back to their respective territories and wait and mourn in their own way. Uh, with a good touch being um, Frosta from the Princess Prom episode who uh, did not join their alliance, uh, they're still showing her um, encasing her kingdom in more ice to, hold, to just close them off close them off away from the rest of Etheria. Uh, good usage of showing uh, Frosta again that they just simply never forgot about her. And one thing I forgot to mention is um, when Glimmer was captured, she was being held captive by Shadow Weaver's magic. And because of that, something weird happened to her. Her powers no longer work, and she is breaking out in random spasms of red pain. So part of this episode is Glimmer dealing with hiding that and with hiding her lack of powers and her mother, Queen Angela, trying to desperately communicate with her. Now that part I especially loved. Uh, throughout this season so far, we've seen Queen Angela as just there. Um, nothing bad about her, just that she was the queen. I mean, what could be done when the focus of the of the show is really on She-Ra? But this episode uh, really shows uh, Glimmer and Queen Angela really coming together, bonding. Uh, Glimmer really showing how she is ashamed, thinking her mother is perfect, and Angela admitting that she is not perfect. It's her fault that her husband died. And I, that is probably my best part of the episode, just the two of them coming together. Now, the other thing I really liked um, is the fact that, as I expected, Entrapta survived. So, the drama of the Princess Alliance breaking... It's just sad because it really boils down to nothing because Entrapta really did survive. And to my utter dismay, she joined the Horde. Just, no! Oh, Entrapta, why? Why? But they seem to be doing something very interesting with it because Entrapta specifically befriends Catra and Scorpia. And Entrapta, in her just wonderfully endearing, weird way, she just really ingratiates herself with Catra and Scorpia. With Scorpia just liking Entrapta's attitude and Catra being utterly confounded by her. I feel Catra, Entrapta, and Scorpia, to me, they're like the Three Stooges with Catra being the Mo of the group. And considering how um, Catra manipulates Entrapta into joining them, Catra telling Entrapta that she was abandoned, she was left behind, it really continues making Catra a force to be reckoned with. Again, as I said previously, it's as if Adora leaving caused Catra to really rise to the occasion and become a much more effective foil antagonist and bad guy. It again really makes me hopeful what will ha on what will happen once Catra is given even more authority and how she will end up uh, evolving as a character. If she will end up outright hating Adora, completely abandoning her, or if there might be some sort of final conflict where one of them will have to die. It's just... Considering I'm on, I'm on the first season and She-Ra just finished season five and it's the ending of the show, I'm just really tempted to rush through all the episodes, but I really need to take my time with this. Uh, so all in all, I say, yeah, this is a very good conclusion uh, to this arc. Um, if I had to give one underlying moral and theme of uh, this arc, it's the seeming lack and inability to communicate. 
uh, Glimmer is unable to properly tell Bo how much their friendship means. Uh, Glimmer doesn't tell and communicate with Queen Angela on everything that Glimmer does and, her, and Glimmer's inadequacies, her lack of powers, and her shame. This miscommunication between Adora and Catra on why Adora needed to leave and Catra's extreme resentment. Uh, Shadow Weaver and how she has this seeming empathy towards Catra after what happened last time. And how Shadow Weaver seems to have sort of some sort of empathy, but Catra appreciates it but does not love her as a mother figure. There's again this communication blockage. This seeming lack of communication um, on how nobody tells each other anything. Um, again, Entrapta being isolated from everybody in her own world, not communicating with the other princesses. Possibly this princess alliance might have been stronger if they were all on much friendlier terms with each other. The fact that Frosta refuses to participate because she, her kingdom is well fortified. Again, I'm probably talking now, I'm probably just spewing, uh, but that is how I see it, and the underlying uh, message, moral, what have you, this, uh, this seeming thread that ran through the previous episodes on how because there is no communication between all these characters, things played out the way they did. So again, I give the I give this episode um, some really high marks for being a good conclusion to this arc and starting this next one with Adora and Catra returning to the first one's ruins that were seen in the beginning of the show, and how Adora needs to discover more who she is and what Shira is. Catra looking for her next big break and this is really getting me excited because after all of this world building and all these characters it appears that we're really now going to get into the lore and backstory of the show as we reach the final three episodes of season one. So that's it for me. I'll be seeing you guys next time for episode 11 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. See you around!